Honorable member for Thornhill. And stigmatize, rinse, and repeat. Which experts is the Prime Minister listening to? What is the specific advice? What year is the advice from? And why is the advice different in Canada than the rest of the world? It's all secrets, Mr. Speaker. Canadians want to know when will this government end the outdated, ineffective, and vindictive mandates? Like I said, the Conservatives never miss an opportunity to try and pretend that Canadians are divided, when in fact, Mr. Speaker, Canadians were united to 90 degree uh, vaccination rates, uh, to pulling together for their neighbours, to following public health rules, to being there for each other. And that's why Canada pulled through better than many countries from this pandemic, why our economy is coming back so strongly. That's why we will continue to listen to experts. That's why we will continue to have Canadians back. Mr. Speaker, I I can't help but pause on the language uh, that the Conservative Party continues to use around vaccinations. Words like punitive, words like vindictive. When we know that vaccines have saved millions, no, billions of lives around the world uh, through this pandemic. The Conservative Party continues its attack on science, continues its attacks on experts. We will continue to follow the science and keep Canadians safe. That's how we have Canadians back, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Canadians stepped up to over 90 percent in getting vaccinated is part of why we have had uh, a pandemic that hit us less hard than many places around the world. That is a fact that we're going to continue to be guided by science regardless of the politics that guides the Conservatives, we will be guided by experts in science. When we invoked the Emergencies Act, we ensured that it was done in a proportional and time-limited way uh, to enable uh, to have the kind of restoring of order that we needed in Canada while maintaining people's confidence in the transparency and the accountability of democracy. Uh, that's why we move forward uh, with the Parliamentary Committee. That's why we've moved forward uh, with a national public inquiry as required to be able to give that full transparency. I can understand the Conservatives are concerned about this, Mr. Mr. Speaker, they're worried uh, that it's going to show the level to which their support for these blockaders contributed to the difficulties for so many Canadians. It is entirely irresponsible for members of Her Majesty's loyal in, uh, opposition to, uh, to stray so close to misinformation and disinformation. I would ask them to be more responsible. Mr. Speaker, last year the Prime Minister flew to Dufino on the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and it was reported that he stayed in an $18 million surf mansion whose owner's name was found in the Paradise Papers. Unbelievable. Now we hear media reports that high-ranking Canada Revenue Agency officials are making sweetheart deals with big business so they don't pay their fair share of tax. Can the Prime Minister please explain how he came to be in a home owned by someone referenced in the Paradise Papers? Who arranged that? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, we see Conservatives choosing to, uh, to sling mud, uh, to play partisan attacks, and to focus on me while we stay focused on Canadians. In regards to the, C uh, the accusations on the CRA, uh, an expert third-party review found that there was no wrongdoing in that particular case and that the agency did not provide any form of preferential treatment to the taxpayer. We will continue to make sure that everyone pays their fair share of taxes. Uh, we will continue to stand up for Canadians, while Conservatives uh, choose to focus on me, we'll focus on Canadians. We see the Conservative Party talking an awful lot about divisions amongst Canadians, but that hasn't been the experience of most Canadians.